This tech tip video will show you how to apply and simulate cutter compensation. We will also discuss the different ways to control the cutter compensation value. Under the G-Code tab of the Configure panel of the Setup branch, you can select if cutter compensation is to be processed, and if so, what the default cutter compensation value is. There are two defaults. The option on default to full radius is typical of control compensation, which means the nominal compensation value is half the diameter of the tool, which shifts the tool from running on the edge of the part either left or right by a distance equal to half the diameter of the tool. The option on default to zero is typical of wear compensation, which means the nominal compensation value is zero, implying zero wear or difference between the actual cutter diameter and programmed cutter diameter. If we do not process cutter compensation while running the simulation, we can see the outer profile path has a tool on the edge of the part, and the inner profile path has a tool tangent to the edge of the part. If we use the option on default to full radius, the outer path is offset so that the tool cuts tangent to the edge of the part, but by compensating by half the diameter, the inner path is no longer on the edge of the part. If we use the option on default to zero, the outer path cuts too far in now, and the inner path runs along the edge as desired again. Obviously, we cannot use both defaults in a simulation where the program uses both wear and control compensation. However, we can override the default setting for each tool in the Tool Manager. In the Cutter Compensation section of the tool, you can specify cutter compensation values and corresponding register numbers. Let's add Cutter Compensation ID 1 with a value of 500, which is half of the 1 inch diameter. Let's also add Cutter Compensation ID 2 with a value of 0. Be sure to save the tool file. Notice now both tool paths move the tool tangent to the edges of the part. To help illustrate the effect of the cutter compensation value, if we put 250 as the cutter compensation value for both registers 1 and 2, we can see both paths cut into the part by 250 now. In the status window, we can see that the cutter compensation value is on and shifting right. We can also see the applied cutter compensation amount. The comp status light also shows that the cutter compensation is currently being applied and which direction it is being applied in. Lastly, we can use the cut comp sketch to visualize the cutter compensation by seeing the original and compensated paths relative to the NC program. Thank you for watching this tech tip video. You can refer to the Vericut help for more information on simulating cutter compensation.